With less than two weeks to Election Day, state and national labor leaders rallied with Connecticut union members to get out the vote for our endorsed candidates. We know what workers need, and what workers need is a governor and a lieutenant governor who have our backs, who walk our picket lines, who don't create picket lines like Tom Foley did, who doesn't, who breaks a union like Tom Foley did, who wouldn't negotiate with workers, said 10 cents an hour and losing your health benefits, you should want to come to work. And then sending Doberman pinchers and German shepherds and, and armed guards on those picket lines, destroying a town, destroying a union, destroying lives. We don't need that in the governor. We need someone that stands with workers, that walks that picket line, that says, you know what? We may not always agree, but we're always going to talk about it. And that's the difference in this governor. I think there are two clear choices we have here. We're talking about the one percenter who hasn't paid taxes in three years, hasn't contributed his part because, after all, this is America. And then there's the, the, the real person, the, you know, Dan Malloy, who's led us who cares about our wages, who cares about the health care, who cares about our retirement and our future. And, you know, when we've contributed to this society, how could we then reflect and enjoy the golden years, if you will? I think we have to take into account those three factors. Four years ago, uh, Tom Foley and I ran against each other. Uh, Nancy Wyman was with me. Uh, we won that election by 6,400 votes. Uh, and as a result, we've accomplished some really big things in four really tough years, as opposed to what Tom would have done, uh, and he told you what he would have done. He would have cut the $2 billion in spending. That would have led to another 36,000 people in the state of Connecticut losing their jobs. Uh, it would have meant that we would not have been able to straighten out our pension uh, obligations. Remember, they were 42% funded when we came into office. He would have defunded them just like they're doing in New Jersey as we speak. When we look at what Foley's talking about and flatlining in the Wisconsin moment, that's a politics that doesn't work. It hasn't worked in Indiana. It hasn't worked in Kansas. It hasn't worked in Wisconsin. It won't work here. Working people having the money to support the economy works. The rich having the money doesn't work. We know there's clear differences between these candidates, right? Yeah. And you have heard over and over again the kind of record that Governor Malloy has built in the state for the last four years. And I remember I was here in 2010 fighting to elect uh, I see Mike's nodding his head from the IBW. Yes, my IBW brother. Um, uh, Dan Malloy wants to invest in the state, has invested in the state, and actually knows that investing in people instead of profits is what we need to do in the state of Connecticut. The Commissioner's Network School had an extended day and continues to have an extended day. And it's just benef the benefits are endless. SIG schools in the middle school are starting to, will be doing um, enrichment next year, extending the student day with enrichment. And the purpose, of course, is to keep these children in school, get them interested, and get the graduation rate up. This would not be possible if we went to Foley's The Money Files a Child. We'd have closing, we'd have schools that would be closing. We would not be as successful as we have been. Under Foley's plan, the students would definitely lose. What did Foley do? in the midst of his business career. Exactly right. But I can't say it that way. So think about it. When we have fights in Connecticut, Dan Malloy is on a picket line fighting to make sure workers are treated fairly. What did Foley do? He closed shops. He closed places. He actually hired scabs and security lines to break strikes. How is that? How is that respecting? How is that respecting the men and women who work every single day? So it's not just what he would have done in the last four years. Think about that as an action. Governor Malloy created jobs in this country and in this state. Mr. Foley outsourced jobs outside of the United States. We're also supporting Dan Malloy and Nancy Wyman because he supported the health care workers in Connecticut. 
When we had the workplace violence legislation, he was there for us. When we did the unsafe staffing bills, he was there for us. He understood the importance of staffing levels and how you would get the outcomes and save the state in hospitals money. He was there for our APRNs, our advanced practice registered nurses, and when they're independent licensed. And again, for Ebola, he showed leadership. It's not in, it was not a blame the nurse situation. We don't want a Texas moment here in Connecticut. We're happy he followed the Scouts motto of to be prepared. I'm a strong supporter and I am so proud to be part of a union, state, federation, state, AFL-CIO, national AFT, national AFL-CIO, that is stepping up and claiming this as a priority race for them. We've got to do this together. People have to know what's on the line. We are fighting and we will fight through next Tuesday. Don't stop. Thank you. As a union, we're stronger together. That's why we're urging our members to unite and send a clear message that Connecticut is not for sale.